Who crafted this narrative? Neville Goddard posed the question. Allow me to share a couple of fascinating stories that were recently told to me by a friend. Amy recounted an event from 10 years ago, her husband mentioned a young child, aged 14 months, who had developed lumps on her neck. A biopsy of one lump revealed signs of cancer, according to a doctor who examined it. Three experts agreed that the child was suffering from cancer. However, another physician doubted this diagnosis. Despite uncertainties, it was decided to keep the child in the hospital for further evaluation. As my wife recounted this tale, her voice faded until I could no longer hear her, but in my mind, I began to rewrite the story, visualizing the scenario and crafting the dialogue internally. That night, as I fell asleep, I envisioned this alternate version more vividly. A few days later, another lump was removed, and it was unanimously determined that the child did not have cancer. Since no treatment had been given, it was concluded that she must have never had cancer, suggesting that her recovery could not have been spontaneous or due to an unknown cause. Upon learning of the new diagnosis, my wife informed the child's mother and grandmother, who were incredulous that mere imagination could alter reality. It may seem fantastical to some that imagination can shape reality, but as those who have followed my teachings know, every effect in the natural world stems from a spiritual cause, what appears to be a natural cause is only an illusion of this world, as human memory fails to connect current events with those previously imagined. Despite a relentless pursuit of material solutions, people often hesitate to accept that their imaginings can manifest into reality, yet this remains an undeniable truth. When you sit in solitude and engage in imagination, you are setting in motion a corresponding cause, and when the effects of this reach you, you might deny having initiated them, but there they are, surrounding you. Beyond the visible, who is the creator? Indeed, they are your own offspring or creations birthed from your imagination. Your imagination is the source of everything, but due to our limited memory, we often fail to recognize those who, like me, claim that life emerges from our imaginations. This friend also shared another insight, saying, while driving home from work, I contemplated the idea of spending a bit more of my income in light of Uncle Sam's, the United States government, increase in my income tax. Thus, I imagine money, crisp, vibrant, and fresh, showering down on me like rain. For nearly a minute, I was lost in this financial daydream. Eventually, the need to pay attention to the road snapped me out of my reverie, putting my monetary fantasy on hold until the morning of April 15th. That day, my employer came into the office and announced, you will receive a 10% salary increase, retroactive to the beginning of this month, and handed me a check for the amount of the raise. A piece of advice, it's safer to envision this monetary shower from the comfort of your bed than while driving on the freeway. Don't follow my friend's example, wait until you're safely at home to indulge in this fantasy, but indulge you must, for I can assert, without any doubt, that all origins trace back to an act of imagination. There's no need to look for physical causes, everything originates in the imaginary. Yet, the world remains skeptical, mocking those with a rich imagination, but they cannot deny this power. A person might physically harm another, with the physical act and its impact being the effect. Thus, the success of the assault seems entirely physical, but I wonder, what preceded the impulse to strike? That impulse was an invisible cause, an act of imagination that, seconds later, became a physical action, affecting both the aggressor and the victim. Everything in this world is brought into existence by imagination and sustained by it, and when imagination withdraws, what was conjured disappears without a trace. Nina, at the beginning of this discussion, according to human judgment, her physical appearance, the clothes she wears, has only existed for 14 months, but the being inside her is as eternal as God himself, without beginning or end. God chose us from within himself, not at our birth from our mothers, but from the foundation of the world, before any material creation. Both you and I were selected by God with a purpose in mind, for without it, what meaning would our existence have if the end of our physical form were the ultimate conclusion? Yet, the end of the physical body is not the end of everything, as we embody life itself, and life is eternal. Jesus represents God's plan of salvation manifested within us, and by fulfilling this plan, we identify with the Father and the Father with us, thus achieving eternity. 
the scriptures say that if we fail to believe we are Him, we will perish in our sins. Our sin lies in not recognizing our inherent worth and divinity. You could spend a lifetime trying to prove the truth of the story of this individual named Jesus, and indeed, it is true, but more importantly, it represents an experience that each of us lives daily, for we are all the Son of God come to earth with the mission of returning to the Creator. In the complex web of existence, the profound yet frequently underestimated power of imagination plays an essential role, as timeless and pervasive as life itself. Neville Goddard raises a compelling question, who is the creator of this story, inviting us to reflect on the origins of creation and the concept of authorship from a metaphysical perspective. This inquiry underscores the idea that we are the creators of our own worlds, molding them with the force of our imagination. The story of a young girl, just 14 months old, whose cancer diagnosis was reversed without any medical treatment, stands as a striking example of how belief and perception can shape our reality, challenging the norms of traditional wisdom. This narrative is among numerous others, adding to a growing collection of stories and studies that suggest a deep connection between mind and body, a bond we are only beginning to understand. While modern medicine, with its focus on empirical evidence and scientifically proven methods, often neglects the potential for imagination to bring about physical change, the practice of visualization by athletes, artists, and leaders highlights its importance. These individuals utilize the power of visualization to craft their futures, indicating that health and wellness could also be influenced by our beliefs and perceptions. Another illustrative story involves an individual who imagined a shower of money, which was subsequently followed by an increase in salary. This anecdote not only showcases the ability of imagination to change material circumstances but also highlights the importance of intention and expectation in the process of manifestation. It seems the mind can blur the distinctions between reality and imagination, unveiling a world filled with creative possibilities. In these tales, the young girl, Nina, represents the eternal and divine essence that resides within each of us. Her story is a reminder of our timeless nature and divine purpose, transcending our physical existence and societal roles. This perspective, deeply spiritual and empowering, prompts us to reconsider our place in the universe and the responsibilities that come with our imaginative powers. Goddard's notion that we are all divine beings, sent to earth with a holy mission, not only enriches our understanding of human life but also urges us to live out this inherent divinity. Recognizing the creative power of imagination provides us with a powerful tool for personal and social transformation. However, this power comes with a great responsibility, the deliberate choice of our manifestations. The attributes of generosity and gratitude, as illustrated in the final story, naturally flow from a soul that acknowledges its divinity and that of others. By sharing our blessings and helping others realize their creative potential, we not only enrich our own lives but also contribute to the elevation of collective consciousness. Imagine a flood of wealth, believe in its arrival, and thus affirm your divine essence. In doing so, share your abundance with others, assisting in their enlightenment, for a heart filled with gratitude is inherently generous. My friend's lack of medical knowledge was irrelevant. Without the capacity to identify a cancer cell under a microscope, he is not a medical expert and knows no more about human anatomy than I do. Yet, he understood the importance of imagination for his wife to announce the girl's healing. That was his only action, fueled by the belief that his words would not return empty but would fulfill their intended purpose. He remained committed to his imaginative act until it materialized. The underlying message here is, and when the outcomes finally reach you, you might deny having initiated them, yet there they are, surrounding you. Beyond what is seen, who is the creator? Indeed, they are your own creations or the products of your imagination.